So everything you see here on this table right now, these are all the electrical components of an entire hydronic boiler system. Every component that's electrical is right here. You have your burner switch, you have your aquastat, you have your zone valve, your thermostat, your vent damper, the circulator, the gas valve. I even have the flame rollout switch and the spill switch in here. So what I'm going to do with you guys today is we're going to go through the wiring. We're going to see how it's all wired. We're going to see how it works. I'm going to put power to it. We're going to watch it all happen. And hopefully by the end of this video, we're going to know a lot about how a hydronic boiler system is wired up and how it works. Okay, so what we have here is our Aquastat. This is a Honeywell 8148E Aquastat. And our power originates right here in the corner. This is where our burner shutoff switch power is coming in. We have L1 and L2. L1 is our hot wire. L2 is our neutral. And the L1 and L2 get hooked up to the L1 and L2 terminals right here. Now, this 120 volts, this powers directly to our transformer, which steps it down to 24 volts for our low voltage circuits like our gas valve, our zone valve. Uh, we have a 24 volt damper in this circuit as well. And it also powers this relay here. Now this relay is for our circulator. When our low voltage uh, boiler circuit fires up, this relay gets pulled in and that starts our circulator. So we're gonna have two wires from our circ pump coming in, a black and white, and that gets hooked up to C1 and C2. All right, so up here in the upper left corner, we have our T and T connections or T and TV. We also have a Z terminal and a W terminal. Now, if you were to look inside the cover of the Aquastat, there's a little diagram in there and it actually tells you that the Z terminal um, is intended to be used for powering zone valves. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how we take the power off of that to run our zone valves. Um, and the W terminal, that is another optional feature where you can put a low level limit controller in. So basically that would be if you had like an external storage tank for your hot water system running off the boiler, you could put a low limit in there to manage the water temperature to maintain a certain temperature. But we're not gonna get into all that today. We're just gonna keep it simple and we're gonna go straight into our TNT wiring. Now a zone valve has two circuits that are required to run it. We need one circuit for the motor, which um, activates a gear that engages our end switch, and we need power for our end switch itself. So our motor is controlled by our thermostat. The thermostat calls for heat, it turns the motor on, it engages the end switch, and our end switch engages our burner circuit, which fires the boiler up. And when the thermostat stops calling for heat, it disengages the motor, the motor disengages the end switch, and when that end switch circuit opens, our boiler shuts down. So to get power to both of these things, we have to take it from the Z terminal on our Aquastat. So what I'm about, before I get into all this zone valve wiring, and this goes there, and this here, and this here, and then you hook this up here, before I get into all that, I'm gonna share with you guys a little piece of information that took me months to figure out on my own because nobody just told me straight out. So basically, this is what you need to remember. Your power comes off a of Z, and that powers your motor, it goes through your thermostat, and it comes back to TV, okay? So it doesn't matter how it's wired here, as long as it goes from Z through your motor and your thermostat and back to TV, it's gonna work. So you can go from Z to your thermostat to your motor back to TV, or you can go from Z to your motor to your thermostat back to TV, it'll work both ways. The other part of this is your end switch circuit. So the wiring I did here was I just kind of stole that off the motor wire and I'm using that to send the tw same 24 volts off of that Z terminal as going to my end switch off of that motor wire. And I'm just kind of stealing it from that circuit. And when the end switch engages, the 24 volts will come out the other red wire and that goes to T. So your end switch circuit is gonna go from Z to T your motor and thermostat circuit is gonna go from Z to TV. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to power our zone valve motor. So we take our 24 volts off of our Z terminal and I sent it along a white wire coming through the thermostat wire down to the zone valves. And this is our white wire here from our Z terminal inside the Aquastat. And I'm gonna hook that up to the red wire that goes directly up another thermostat wire to your actual thermostat. And that's gonna to go to your R terminal on your thermostat. When the thermostat calls for heat, 
it's going to close the connection between the R and W terminals in here. Now you're going to have another wire, a white wire that connects to your W terminal. And so when the thermostat closes that connection, the 24 volts will hop from that R terminal over to the W terminal and it'll come back down the thermostat wire on a white wire and it comes back down to your zone valve. Now that 24 volts, we're going to send it directly into the motor. So we're going to hook it up to one of the yellow wires and that's part of your motor circuit. Now as the 24 volts travels through the motor, the motor is going to turn the gear and it's going to spin. And that electricity is going to come back out the other yellow wire. Now what we're doing here, this we're going to actually connect it to two wires here. One wire is your TV. That's the T and T circuit going back and that goes to your TV connection terminal in the Oxstat here. Now that TV, I have a red wire hooked up to that. That follows the thermostat back down and we hooked it up to the other end of the motor. So our power is coming from Z, coming up to the red wire that goes up to the thermostat, goes through the thermostat to the W terminal, comes back down the thermostat wire on the white goes to the yellow wire into your zone valve motor, comes back out the other yellow wire, goes onto our red wire that goes up to our TV, and that completes the circuit. The TV is like a common for the circuit to take it all the way back to the aquastat. Now, what we also have here is one of the red wires from your zone valve wired in there as well. So not only does that 24 volts travel back to the TV terminal in your aquastat, but it also re-enters the zone valve to the end switch. So when the motor activates the end switch, that circuit closes and it'll, that 24 volts will come out the other red wire. And that red wire gets hooked up to the T wire, which is a green wire in this case. And we send that all the way back to the T terminal on the aquastat. And that completes our T and T circuit, which is powered through our Z terminal. All right, so now we're focused back on our aquastat. Our T and T circuit is completed, and we have the signal we need for the boiler to fire up. The first place it's going to go is to this high temperature limit switch. Now, this is a switch that detects off of this bulb right here the temperature of the water in the boiler. And you have different temperature settings on a dial right down here. So I have it set to 180 degrees right now. It's clearly below 180 degrees because I just have it sitting out in the air. And what happens then is once the temperature of the water in the boiler is below that set point, it's going to fire up. So it will send the 24 volt signal and it will close our relay. It'll pull it in and start our circulator pump. What will happen then is it will send 24 volts. And this is a Molex plug here. This is for our vent damper. Some of these aquastats have them, some don't. There is a way to wire them in off of that Z terminal if you need to without the uh, Molex plug, but we're not going to get into that. We're just going to use the Molex plug today because this has one. The 24 volts is then going to go through the wires up to the vent damper. And once that vent damper fully opens, it's going to give the signal that it's okay for the boiler to fire up. It's going to come back and it's going to go onto our burner circuit. Now we have B1 and B2 down in the left corner there, and that's our burner circuit. So once our temperature limit indicates that our temperature water is low enough for this boiler to fire up, and once our vent damper fully opens, it allows us to prove the circuit and allow power to come to B1 on our burner circuit. And that 24 volts is going to come out of wire here and it's going to go through our spill switch. Now the spill switch, that's like a safety feature. It goes on your flue pipe, and this just senses the temperature of the flue gases going out through your chimney. And what happens is, is if the temperature gets too high, it's going to break this circuit, and it's not going to allow that 24 volts to carry on and fire up the boiler. So it's like a safety feature. If you have like a raccoon stuck in your chimney or something, this is going to activate and shut your boiler down. Once it leaves the spill switch, it's going to travel along and it's going to go to your flame rollout switch. Now this is the rollout switch that sits by your burners. And if the flame were not going into the boiler where it's supposed to be, if it were rolling back out towards you, for example, if you're standing in front of it, that's also going to trip this sensor. And that's going to not allow the boiler to fire up. From there, it's going to go right into our gas valve. As you can see here, this is our gas valve, and our B1 is going to go into our gas valve. 
the other black wire coming out is our B2, and that's going to go back into our aquastat. And that's like our common for the burner circuit. And once that circuit is complete, our gas valve will open up and the boiler lights up. All right, so now I'm going to put power to this thing and we're going to see it all in action. We're going to see everything work and we're going to follow it all the way through. So I'm going to turn my burner switch on. Now we have power. All right, so now we have power here at our aquastat. Our 120 is coming in. We have power on our transformer right now. Our transformer is giving us 24 volts at this C terminal. And that 24 volts is traveling all the way up through these connections and up to the R terminal on the thermostat. And right now it's stopping right there because my thermostat is not calling for heat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my thermostat up to call for heat. You're gonna hear a click and that's gonna send the 24 volts onto the W terminal down to the zone valve and my zone valve motor will then begin to run. So let's do that. Click, zone valve motor is running and it's gonna push in that end switch. When that end switch pulls in, it's going to activate the relay. Our circ pump starts. Our vent damper is now opening. And once that vent damper opens, it will fire up our burner circuit. And our gas valve will light up. And there we have it.